Um, thank you, delegates. Um, as the president said, we are moving to chapter nine, uh, a fair go for all. Um, I want to begin by recognising country and thank the Ghana people for allowing us to have this amazing gathering on their land. Delegates, I am proud and honoured to introduce chapter nine, a, get, a fair go for all. This is a comprehensive and inclusive chapter, the result of the hard work, dedication and collaboration of the rank and file of our party, the industrial wing, and of course, the, uh, the parliamentary wing, wing as well, as well as many advocates, which I want to acknowledge from the community. It reflects the passion and aspiration of our movement for fairness, the notion that all Australians are given the opportunity to participate to their fullest potential. Things in life aren't always easy. It's part of the human condition, part of the human experience to face illness, disability, unemployment, and to have children to become a carer, to age, and sometimes, an, a, 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 and as we heard yesterday, to pass. A fair go is deeply held Australian value. It goes to the heart of Labor's agenda. It is so much of what sets us apart as a party. It, uh, and, uh, and it is our social security system that plays the biggest role in ensuring Australians get a fair go when they need it most. Because we are all in this together and we all have a responsibility collectively to each other. I want to address the issue of New Start. This includes Australians who are looking for work. I won't mince words. The rate of New Start is too low. It is a cause of poverty, social isolation and hardship. It is a barrier for job seekers trying to find work. People are struggling to get interviews and to have the clothes to go to those interviews. And that is why, delegates, Labor will urgently conduct a proper review of New Start and associated payments and supports like youth allowance. It's important to have a proper process and build the case for change with the broader community. We need, we need to make sure the changes most effectively benefit the people who need it most. This is the approach, everyone, that Labor took when we increased the age pension. We consulted fully, carefully designed a response and paid for it in the budget. As a result, we delivered the biggest increase in history of the pension, lifted people out of poverty and put in place fair indexation to make sure the pension keeps up with the cost of living and wages. That is how you deliver real change. In opposition, Labor has defended fairness, and on many, many occasions we have won. I want to reflect on this. If we hadn't won these fights, which were spearheaded by Jenny Macklin, we would have today a pension age of 70 locked in, one of the oldest in the developed world. An energy supplement would, an en the energy supplement would have been cut to new pensioners, and changes to pension indexation would leave pensioners $80 a week worse off, and it would have been locked in. In terms of the NDIS, Labor established the NDIS. It is a proud Labor legacy. But with five ministers in five years and serious implementation issues, it is abundantly clear that the Liberals really don't care about what happens to the scheme. Their hearts are simply not in it. The turnover of ministers has been so frequent, I can't even tell you all their names. People are stuck in hospital because plans aren't in place or services simply aren't there. Families are regularly waiting months and months for early intervention for children undermining one of the most fundamental elements of the NDIS. You know these people. People can't see a printed copy of their draft plan and it is taking far too long for planning issues to be fixed. The NDIS promised improvement with new and better ways of dealing with the accessibility, including people with disability, and including people with disability deserve in every element of life. But as, that, but, but as it stands, too many people being left utterly frustrated by their experience of the NDIS. 
Labor will work every day to get the NDIS back on track. That is a commitment to you. We want to deliver on the promises of the NDIS. Labor will put Australians with disability back at the heart of the NDIS. We will improve the planning process and cut down on red tape and bureaucracy. We will work with states and territories to stop people falling between the cracks in the health, justice and education system. We will tackle the long waiting times and delays head on. We will get rid of the NDIA staffing cap so the agency has the resources it needs. And importantly, we will value advocacy and the voice of people with disability. Because Labor knows that real disability reform is not just about supports and services, but about accessibility and inclusion in every part of life. We also know that without fair pay, good jobs and better training, it, we simply won't have the workforce we need to deliver the NDIS. And I want to acknowledge the thousands of people who work in the NDIS. You do important work and you are, dri and you are driven by Labor values. Labor understands that the implementation of the NDIS needs to be better to better value workers and we will deliver on that. In conclusion, can I say this? I also acknowledge this chapter covers issues of migration policy and I also anticipate some very important amendments in relation to the Uluru Statement from the Heart. Delegates, in closing, this chapter builds on the work of previous Labor governments. The ideas and directions outlined here will make Australia a better and a fairer country. I want to thank all who have been involved and I commend this chapter to the conference. Thanks, Linda. Seconded.